You know, it's so crazy because I remember um, years ago, I mean, literally like a decade ago, I was on a friend's radio show and he knew how much I was into astrology. And so he went up to the computer and put in, he's like, what sign are you? I'm like, I'm a Leo. My son's a Leo or I'm a star. The sun sign is a Leo. And so he goes back there and he's typing in something. He goes, does this sound like you? And he reads me this horoscope and all these traits. And I go, actually, no, not at all. And he goes, dang it, because I read a different sign. Oh, yeah, he's trying to... <laughs> he's trying to trick me. Yeah. So I've always been to astrology. But you kind of, I feel like more because of me, you're, you're really like, oh, wow. Yeah. Well, the, yet again, the more that I'm growing and the more that I'm reading and I'm learning, I'm just open and I, I just want to I want to learn. Yeah. I want to learn about astrology. We, we had uh, Sherry on, who, uh, who was a, a psychic and medium in different. December. Which and is different. Which is different. But I'm s- different from uh, astrology. But, but just I'm learning saying, and I just, absorbing yeah, I, everything. I, I just want to really hear, because I think that's our biggest question is, is how does everything work? Is you know What is this energy and this life and this world and, and everything? And you have religion and you have um, – all these different ways to think about life and the afterlife. Some people believe in God. Some people don't. Some people believe in astrology. Some people don't. Some people believe in psychics and mediums. And some people don't. Yeah. Some people think this is a simulation and some people don't. Some people <laughs> think we're reincarnated or we go to heaven or hell. And there's all these different incredible stories and, and theories, if that's the correct word to use. Um, and I'm just always open to learn. Of course. And I, I just find it fascinating because there is truth to it. It's interesting when when you read your horoscope and I go, that's not you, me, but yeah. then, and, I, and I'm trying to find a way for it to be. And even when we talk to Susan Miller, who's our guest today, everything she says about you is so you Spot and on. it's not me uh-huh. and vice versa. And also too, we explored today um, your moon sign, your rising sign and your sun sign. And the sun sign is essentially what everyone knows when you do your horoscopes. I'm a Leo, you're a Pisces, but there is so much that goes into the makeup of who you are when you're born. And basically what they do with these charts, which you guys will see more of in just a minute, you get your birth date, the month, the date, the year, the, the exact time. the time, exact time, and where you were born. And these charts are made up. And basically what she explains is that in astrology, it's just a guide. It's basically giving you the tools of, hey, based on your chart and what's happening in the world and the numbers and the mathematics of it, this would be a good route if you're looking to do this. You should do it now. But it's not your fortune. It's just, hey, take this advice. This is going to be a really good time to do it. And if you, the rest yeah. is up to you. It's not like, hey, this is what's happening and you have no say. Because your life, you're in charge of it, of you're course. You're in charge. and it kind of, it's, it's, it's almost like when we're planning our cross-country trip. There's many different routes. But the one that is the quickest and the less... You know, it's like, exactly. oh, let's take the... the the well-guided path. <laughs> Let's go on the path with lights and roads and roads. hotels. <laughs> yeah. Let's not go exactly. off-roading. Exactly. So we're really excited. We have arguably one of the most famous astrologers, Miss Susan Miller, today. So we're really excited. But let's hop into it before we bring our guest on. Yes. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the Freddie and Alyssa show. If you are new, please. <coughs> <laughs> please. Oh, oh, the show please, stops. Please. Please. <laughs> If you don't hit subscribe, my life is at stake. Please hit subscribe. I need them. <laughs> now we're getting morbid. Um, welcome, everyone, to the Freddie and Alyssa show. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe, <laughs> like, comment, all that fun YouTube stuff. If you're watching on Facebook, like and follow the page. If you're listening on iTunes, if you want to leave a five-star review, uh, that would be <laughs> awesome as well. We've been putting up videos for a little over two years now, vlogs, one-off videos, lots of podcasts, and we're bringing them to you every single week. Um, so you can do a little friendly stalking on the page and have a little fun with it. But um, but we want to hop into this. And then real quick, we do have a merch store. We've got t-shirts. We've got well, hoodies are going to come in the winter. We've got t-shirts, <laughs> but we've got masks as well. We've got an hourglass mask. We've, let me show a couple others. Cause I last love episode, ever since I called you out, you don't stretch them anymore. Yeah, you, you ruined you, it for you me. You really delicately A pride mask, a mustache, show or as my anchor. friend says, moustache. Moustache. And an anchor. An anchor mask. So cute. So there's many, many options. we got the link in the description. We also are bookable on Cameo if you'd like a shout-out video or if you'd like us to, well, Alyssa will sing happy birthday in a very beautiful way. I will ruin it. 
Um, but if you want to give your friends a little shout out video, we're bookable on cameo.com forward slash FM Smith 319. And we have fun doing those as well. And, um, but I want to hop in because we had a really, really fun conversation yes. with Susan. She is a breath of fresh air. So bright, so happy. Just, it's a great time. So grab yourself a coffee or a drink, sit back and enjoy astrologer Susan Miller. Yes. And I have to say too, I'm so, so excited to have you, Susan. I've been oh. reading your work seriously for years. Astrology Zone. Like, really? Like, yes, girl. Like all on my phone for years. Oh, and so wow. I'm so excited to chat with you today. Every morning I'm in excited bed. that you called me. We have to promise to have a dinner when I come to LA a lot, only right now. Governor Cuomo's not letting us out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, so I have a question for you. So for a lot of our listeners, they might not really know what astrology is, what it is that you do. So I'm just curious if you would kind of explain to you what astrology is and what do you do as an astrologer? Wow, that is such a good question. I wish everybody would ask me that. <laughs> astrology is, first of all, not about predestination or fortune telling. It's the study of mathematical cycles, some that repeat in your life, even fairly often, some that will never come again in your life. It's great for planning, for striking when the conditions are perfect. There are other times when I'm going to ask you to ask more questions, hold back, or if things are changing and I can see that. It's like a weather forecast. I can see if conditions are changing and that you should really hold off a few more weeks because you'll begin to see it, especially if we're near an eclipse. Typically we get four eclipses in a year. This year we had one on January 10th, then one on June 5th, the day of George Floyd's funeral. Uh, then we had one June 21st, the 4th of July, which there'll still be things coming out of that one, uh, November 30th, and December 14th will be our last this year. So that's a lot of eclipses in one year because usually they make us uh, correspond to new conditions and new realities and that we have to be flexible and uh, they always shine a light of truth. So if you've been puzzled about a situation after the eclipse, you have that piece of information that suddenly you understand everything about it. So, huh. and, and how does that break down with mathematics? Because that's my favorite thing. She's more of the words and the writing. I'm more of the math and the oh, numbers. And I love that. Yes. <laughs> well, NASA knows the calibration of the planets. It knows that um, that Mars is at 23 degrees Aries right now because we want to go there. <laughs> So we have to follow it around to know exactly when we should get there. It'll take seven years to get there. So they have to plot these things. And, and we know the sun is in Leo and so forth right now. And uh, so they have these tables called an ephemeris. And you can look at the tables and know where Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Neptune, any of the planets happen to be. Now, when they align, they start talking to each other. They have to be within five degrees and they start communicating. Now, if they're conjunct together, like shoulder to shoulder, really close, that is the strongest aspect you can get. And today is the new moon, the sun conjunct the moon. So it's new beginnings, and it's in Leo, the sign of entertainment and children and fun, because in August, it's too hot to work, so it is time to play. And it shows that, that the universe wants us to take time off to think and be creative and to experiment and have a little fun because that actually helps creativity. By astrology, that's what we're taught. The ancients wrote down everything. And when you're an astrologer, you sign that you will be faithful to the ancient teachings. Now, they didn't know about Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto. Those came later. But when they were born into our consciousness, we look at world events. So when Pluto was founded, you know, discovered, I should say, 
it was, I think, 1930, somewhere in there. And that's when the atomic bomb was discovered at that time. And so we, we see Pluto as the planet of destruction and rebirth. It's the phoenix rising from the ashes. Um, it is the ruler of Scorpio, but its ancient ruler of Scorpio is Mars, and, it, and Scorpio shares that with Aries, and so we look at both for Scorpio. Uh, just like um, uh, Jupiter uh, rules used to rule Pisces in the ancient days, but then when Neptune was found, we felt the creativity of Neptune Neptune is considered the patron of the arts, that it was a really good planet to rule Pisces. But we look and see what Jupiter is up to also. We look at both. So some signs we look at both. Let's see, what are you? Well, Alyssa, you're a Leo. I am. <laughs> and you have three planets in Leo. You have Mars, the sun, and Venus. Oh, Freddie, she's got Mars close to Venus. That's the sex appeal aspect. <laughs> she's got magnetism. She's <laughs> like dripping with, see, I can prove it. Look. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and because you have Mars in the 10th house, like I, I have it there too, you will go to the mat and do whatever is necessary to be successful. You'll stay up late at night. It, now, you act also or just have the, uh, the podcast? Or tell me about what you're doing. Yeah, basically. I mean, I grew up acting on stage, traveling, theater, all of that. So, yeah, I do all of it as well. And it, it definitely makes sense because as a Leo, you know, you just, you love it. So, eventually, you're going to get the role of a lifetime. Love and that. it will make your mark. Not quite yet, because you're going to be focused on the house very soon. You're already starting. Either you want to move or you have moved and you like your space, but you want to fix it up. You're obsessed. <laughs> you're like, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Because you'll decorate it beautifully. Just beautifully. You have Libra rising. Doesn't she look like a Libra? You know, Libra is ruled by Venus. She's Venus's daughter. <laughs> Need I say more? You know, and they're they're often blondes. You know, and she you have so many friends, Alyssa. You like to see them too. This this quarantine business is a little hard for a Libra rising because you really like to see people. And well, you must be doing a lot of Zoom calls. So many Zooms. <laughs> <laughs> you have a chart very similar to my older daughter. Yeah. Even though you're born in different years, she has Pluto rising also. You are strong. See, people who meet you, they think, oh, she's a little cream puff. This is good because you can fly under the radar undetected. They're not going to be overly worried about you. And that's their mistake because you're a fabulous competitor. <laughs> and I always love it when people underestimate me, you know, so, so you're, you're fantastic. And the house is everything this year. Also your family, does your family live in LA? No, they are unfortunately on the East Coast in New Jersey. So everyone- Oh, well you'll have to come. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, then you're in my territory and then I take you out, uh, both of you. <laughs> Yeah, you, you'll, uh, you're born with a very good chart. Alyssa's born with Jupiter in the house of marriage and partnership. Mm -hmm. Partnerships are heaven for her. You know, for some people, they're not. They're just the opposite. And they wish they had never formed a business partnership. For you, Alyssa, it's magic. It's the best part of your chart. And you will always form very happy, serious, committed relationships in your life. Now, this includes with your husband or with your agent, your publicist, uh, your manager, um, your social media director, <laughs> anybody you work one-on-one -on -one with in a very close way is you're just good together. And that person really performs for you. They're enthusiastic and they want to make you happy and successful in the business sense. And in, in marriage, it would be very loving. 
Hmm. Now, are you partners in business or tell me about you, the two of you? Renny and I were partners in business and life. We've been together for 10 years next May. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're engaged. <laughs> we're going to get married next year. So we do it all together and you are spot on. I mean, partnership is everything for me. So. Well, are you, are you thinking of tying the knot or not really? Yeah. Next year we're going to do it. We're thinking next yeah. May. Never do it with Venus retrograde because love cools off. But even worse with Mars retrograde, guess what? That's going to happen this year, September 9th to November 13th. That's a very long time, September, October, November. And when you um, get married with Mars retrograde, the sex, the real sex. <laughs> so For all the girls that were really sad that had to delay their wedding this year because of the virus, yeah. the universe was helping them. Wow. To get away from that. Earlier this year, from May 13th to June 25th, we had Venus retrograde. We had everything. Now with Mars retrograde, you know, his little brother Mercury is a little copycat. It's like Mars is retrograde. Mars is retrograde. I'm going to go retrograde. No, Mercury, stop. I am from October 13th to November 3rd. So now to give you an idea of Mars retrograde, Mars is great to launch a new product. Let's say you owned a studio or a production company. You wanted to, you know, debut the film you've been working on for a year. You don't do it with Mars retrograde. Mars is the competitor, the one who makes us excel and be the best we can be and get the good ratings and the good reviews from critics. Don't want to do it with Mars retrograde. Um, and I knew this year was going to be one of those years was like walking through a garden where you had to be sure not to step on the tulips or the lilacs or the roses. You had to be so careful where you stepped because the first three months of the year was fantastic. January, February, March was pretty good. But then we got to March 20th and, and things started changing. Uh, Saturn went into Aquarius and then in uh, May we had Venus retrograde until June. June had two eclipses. July had eclipses. August is a good month, but now September, October and first half of November are not great because Mars is retrograde. And then we have an eclipse at the end of November and one in mid-December. Now those eclipses are mild compared to the ones we've had. Uh, so Thank goodness for that. But I, I like 2021 even more. To give you an idea of how I follow astrology myself, I saw the sweep of this year. Now, Bloomingdale's had given me my own pop-up shop January and February. And I was so excited. They did a beautiful job, and they replicated it in Westfield Mall, in San Francisco, in Bergen County, New Jersey, and, of course, the flagship had the prettiest one. And so I went to all the stores and it was big success. And I was really sad to see it come down March 1st. But then March 20th, everything closed in New York, including Bloomingdale's oh. for months. And I was looking for an app company. And I had looked in April, I looked at eight, they pitched to us. And my agent out there, my head of digital said, you didn't like any of them. I said, I didn't hear a choir of angels and thunder and lightning. And she said, all right, let me think about it. You have to go back. Um, so after I got done with San Francisco, I went back. And then Macy sent me to uh, Chicago and Herald Square and then Washington, D.C. Now, by the time I got to Washington, it was March 12th. And Sarah calls and says, can you come out to L.A. really fast? By this point, my children are screaming. You better not get on a plane. Oh, my God. People are on ventilators. But you saw the rest of the year as a mess. So I did go. And I saw that last company. And I loved that last company. I wanted an L.A. company because I write until midnight, one in the morning. Mm -hmm. And when the guys have to post, three hours earlier is still a decent hour. They can go out and eat, come home and help me post. You know, it isn't like staying up all night. I want to be kind to the people who work for me. Plus I love Angelinos. It's such a um, creative city. So um, 
I said, okay, that's the company. We got to go through legal really fast. I gave it to my LA lawyer, my New York lawyer. They don't know each other. They agreed it was a good contract, made tiny changes. I sent the deposit. And on Zoom, I created a new app. And it was approved by Apple yesterday and Google Play. You know, they try to break it before you put it on the market. You know, they... <laughs> and, uh, and I got my developer account, so everything comes to me. And we go on the market August 28th. So oh, is nice. this for Astrology Zone or... Yes, I have an app now. But right. I wanted to update it, make it more fresh, easier to navigate. Wow. And uh, I'm leaving Funware and going to a new company in Vemo. And they're in Santa Monica. Which means I'm going to be in your city all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other company was in Austin, which was a little harder to get to because there's not as many flights, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so you know, and I'm always in L.A., so, you know, it was always off my path. But I like Austin very much. It's a lot of fun there and the food. The people are really nice. And, um, you know, I love that cowboy vibe, you know. <laughs> Totally. <laughs> and the food really is delicious. And I know I really enjoyed going there. And I have a cousin there. But, um, you know, now there's a whole new chapter. But my point is, I listen to myself. And you saw this year was messy. And I had to launch my app before Mars went retrograde. So I'm doing it on August 28th at 1030 a.m., your time, 1.30 p.m. Wow. my time. I did the charts. You get it right down to the time. You have to be sure the moon is not void, of course. That means when the moon in any month, she's meeting and greeting everyone, saying hello and having tea with other planets, <laughs> champagne. But then she gets tired. She's now met with all the planets She's tired and she's not much used to any of us. She needs to have her beauty, sleep, and rest. It's a little like Mercury retrograde, but it's shorter. It could be for an hour, it could be for a whole day. Now, I made sure, like today, the moon was not void, of course, and Courtney uh -huh. knows about that too. And uh, so, you know, you, you pinpoint everything to make sure you have the best possible planetary support. My mother, who taught me astrology, and she was a real scholar, and didn't want to teach me, mm. I begged her. I was born with a birth defect. I grew up in hospitals. And finally, when I was 14, they went in because they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. I was bleeding internally at such a horrific rate. I've had 40 blood transfusions in my life. And I... Uh, I was paralyzed during that operation from the knee down. So I had a big metal brace and two crutches. I didn't go to high school at all, except the first, first six months of sophomore year. After that, I did all homeschool, which isn't, isn't ideal, but what are you going to do? And I took my PSATs, my SATs, my Regents exams. I kept studying. I got into a New York University and I majored in business because my father said, you'll always work if you major in business. <laughs> that sounded good to me considering yeah. my life was in shambles, you know. But I asked my mother if, if I'd ever walk again and she would tell me, she would read my chart all the time, but I wanted to read it and she wouldn't teach me. Finally, I wrote to a magazine, a horoscope magazine, and I said, will I ever walk again? I didn't hear anything, but one day my mother walked into the living room and I was doing my homework. She said, did you write to Horoscope Magazine? I said, how does she know? Did I crumple a piece of paper that she found? I said, they never answered me. It was seven months ago. She said, they did answer you it's in the latest issue. I said, what did they say? Well, I don't know. We'll read it together. And they felt I would. You know, when you ask an astrologer a question like that, they put it together like a puzzle. Distinguished doctor. They can tell if you're working with good doctors. Lives in a big city. Access to facilities. Good attitude of the patient. Good aspects to health. Supportive family. They were, they were looking at everything. They said, we think you will walk. And I do. 
people think I'm making all this up because when you see me, you can't tell. I went through all this. Yeah. Except I always cover all my scars. I don't go to the beach. I'm, I'm covered with scars. But it's all right. You know, they're battle scars. They're okay. But she, she, when, I, when she read me that, I said, what do these terms mean? And she, she said, but you got your answer. I said, I want to know what those terms mean in astrology. She said, oh, wait a minute. I know what you want to do. You're going to double check the editor in chief. I said, yes, that's right. <laughs> Why not? She said, all right, Susan, I will teach you, but you have to study 12 years or you won't be any good. And I said, okay. She said, but you'll start to read for your friends. I said, I don't have any friends. Do you see anybody over here? What am I going to do? Sneak out two flights down in a walk up? <laughs> no. <laughs> Where am I going to go? I'm 14 years old. Um, so she began realizing I was right. And she did teach me. Before she died, I showed her the list of magazines. Vogue Japan, W Korea, Tempo in Turkey, Claudia Brazil, Amica Italy, Esmo to Spain, Vogue Germany, Vogue China, Vogue Greece. I said, you started all this, little mom. I used to write for L. And in style in America, I'm taking a break from America right now because I need a spread. I don't want a one page because then it sounds like a fortune cookie. I, I need a spread and magazines can't give me that right now. It's okay. I keep myself occupied. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, you know, so that's how I got started in astrology. That's amazing. And how does it all come together? Because I, I feel, I mean, do you, because I, I guess I'm just trying to understand how you see like, so is it energy? Are we all connected? Like, how do you see the, oh, why the world? Astrology work? We don't know why it works. So it's just we all the math. Know. It's the math. And it, like Biden has such good aspects. I did his chart last night with yours, you know, here it is. Joe Biden. <laughs> oh my thought, God. Oh yeah. He's under very good aspects and it's his time. You know, he worked so hard all these years and you wonder, am I ever going to be, recognized with the top prize and but you know now people ask me does trump have a good chart he does if if you're getting that high up you pretty much have a good chart hmm. but this time i think biden has a slightly better chart but that doesn't mean that he's a shoe in that's not like that there's no predestination it's the person that works the hardest at it you can be given all the opportunity but you have to supply the rest of it you have to reach for that plum on the tree or nothing will happen. You know, you really have to work toward it. But I can tell you the windows of opportunity. I can increase your success rate 10 times. If you listen to me, of course, no one does. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I was going to ask you too, is that, so it is, so you, you, you highly recommend really looking at this as a guide and yeah. obviously you have to put the work in for it to come to fruition, but you're giving yourself an additional advantage by paying attention to what's going yes. on. Yes. And you know, I can tell you it's time to strike right now. And you, you know, sometimes a Virgo will say, oh, but I'm not ready. It's not perfect yet. You're going on stage. It's now you're on the air. There is not a moment to waste. You need to take advantage of this opportunity now. You, I can't give you an aspect this good later. So just uh, present the idea to a publisher if you have a book idea or to a studio if you have a screenplay or audition like crazy. Tell your agent, I want to audition for everything. <laughs> and, you know, it just depends on what area of your life. My daughter needs an apartment. And I said, Chrissy, you've got to find it before December 19th because you, so do you, um, Alyssa, you have the same aspect where if you wanted to move or buy a vacation home or do something special for your parents, now through December 19th actually is the best. Okay. The best in 12 years. So we we got to share something with you, Susan. So we, we um, interestingly enough, we are moving oh. to Florida at the end of September. And we're looking to buy a house by the end of this year, early next year. Perfect. You have to do it. You know who moved down there is Pharrell. 
Really? Where's my friend? Aww. He didn't want to live in LA because he has triplets now. Little, little tykes, they're like three years old. It must be adorable. And then he has Rocket. And uh, he, he wanted to bring them up in his wife's city of Miami. That's yeah. what we're doing because she grew up in Florida and then her parents I, are going to be oh, retiring right. soon yeah. and we want to get married next May if you think that's a good month. <laughs> and uh, oh, I have to work on this. It's more than just a minute. I have to get back to you on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. But it's really interesting know? that you're sharing that because there's there's so many things that we're pitching right now. Uh, we have a, a, a screenplay that we're pitching and a reality show that we're pitching. And we've been pitching oh, wow. all summer and we're continuing to do so. So maybe we'll get, uh, you know, a little- I love this. I hope you inspire your followers. I went, you know, I love Twitter. Twitter's my favorite because you can put in a link easily, not in the profile. And I know I go on Instagram too. I go on both and I'm at astrology zone on both because there's too many Susan Millers. And one girl on Twitter somewhere else, she was not a follower. I was just reading. She said, it's okay to just uh, binge on friends all through the quarantine. And I'm like, no, <laughs> we have to use this time. This is part of our lives. And we're so lucky to be living through something like this because I think there's gonna be an explosion of creativity. This year, Jupiter, giver of gifts and luck, good fortune planet, will be, has been talking to Neptune, the planet of the silver screen, of creativity, of poetry, of dance, all the arts. And I think this is the first time in our experience in life that the whole world is experiencing the same thing at the same time. So when you refer to it in a movie or a book or music or anything, people are going to respond to that and say, wait a minute, I felt that way too. Or, wow, that person felt that way and I felt this way. But there's still a connection. And there's, it's like a magnet. And I think it's going to bring the world together. I, I think it's great. Did you hear about, I read this on the History Channel. I wanted, to, you know, I've read about the Spanish flu, and that was in all over America, but in New York too. But I went back to Europe and the bubonic plague. And it used to roll through Europe all the time. It would stop and start. And the reason was they couldn't stop it because they didn't know what was causing it. So uh, they finally found out it was caused by gnats or please, I should say, on the hair of rats. We'll leave that alone. So now let's zoom into London. There were a couple who had already lost two children to the plague earlier. And they had a newborn little baby boy, William, and they heard the plague was coming. So they bought tons of food, you know, the kind of food that would last. They shuttered the door, they pulled down the windows, they pulled down the shades and wouldn't let anybody in. They were determined to keep their little boy alive and they were successful. And little William grew up to be William Shakespeare. <gasps> oh, children. Wow. And this is on the History Channel, but there's a part two. So now I did his chart. They give you all the information. He's got all these planets in Gemini. He's a born writer. So he's writing these plays and he's so enjoying seeing people respond to his plays and they're loving them and, and they're, they're buying tickets, they're going to. And so he's getting involved in the production and the costumes and, oh, he's just loving the whole process. But now it's 1605, it's the beginning or 1604, the plague is coming back. And the British government said, you know what? Every time we noticed where people gather together, we get a serious outbreak and people die. So we're shutting down the theaters. He said, well, mine is half outside and half inside the Globe Theater. It so doesn't matter. We're shutting all the theaters down. So he had to be home. He's like, well, I can't go out. I guess they use the word quarantine. I don't know if they use that word, but it was the same thing. And he said, what will I do? Well, I have to make a living, so I'll write. In one year, 
between 1605 and 1606, he wrote Anthony and Cleopatra, King Lear, and my favorite, Macbeth. Oh my wow. gosh. That's my story. Wow. Doesn't that, and you are reminding me of this story because you wrote a screenplay and you've been busy. And, you know, I feel during this period, all the, the creativity is inside us. Usually we're used to being influenced by the outside world, but this time it's coming from inside out. Mm. And you intuitively know it. And you're using this precious time where we can think and, and not spend so much time in commuting and running around. God, I'm saving so much money in taxi cabs. It's insane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to drive. So I, I cabs everywhere, but or Ubers, you know, either one. And, um, but you know, we're, Nature wanted us to sit still. Now, I have something revolutionary to tell you that I haven't told my readers yet. Every 20 years, Jupiter meets with Saturn. They have dinner, and they plan what the next 20 years are going to be like in society. Because the sign they meet in and the, the things they plot at that time affects government, politics, fashion, um, theater, movies, books, music, dance, everything. It is the background music to our lives. Now get this, for the past 200 years, and they were meeting every 20 years, except for one little exception, and I'll get to that in a minute, they always met in Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn, Earth signs. They never met in any other signs. Always Earth. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Over and over and over. Every 20 years. Well, guess what? What, what happened during that 200-year period? We built cathedrals and, and skyscrapers and bridges and tunnels and roads. We laid down railroad tracks. We started the Industrial Revolution. We started the assembly line. We started consumerism. Actually... Maybe you could think of some more things, but we started modern life the way we know it. Well, guess what? This is earth shattering. They're meeting on December 21 this year. So we're, every astrologer is excited because we're having the grand conjunction. But this year we call it the grand mutation because they're meeting in Aquarius. And that's an air sign and they're never meeting in earth again. So the robots are coming. Oh, God. <laughs> and the taxis are coming. And, but all kinds of electronic things that we can't even imagine. Mm. And there's going to be big changes in medicine. And the CRISPR, you know, that big machine in Switzerland, it can get into genes and take out the, the diseases that make people suffer. And, the, you know, that's great. Now, we will have to have government rules because you can make designer babies and we don't want all little boys or all little girls or all blue eyes. You know, we want diversity. So they'll have, and governments are very slow about creating rules because believe me, when I was on the internet in 1995, there were no laws. It was the wild west. It was like a nightmare. It's a miracle I lasted. <laughs> uh, 25 years this year. But anyway, um, this is pretty exciting. And the, it is the age of Aquarius now, but wait, it'll get much more so. And we got a little preview of it this year when Saturn, little Saturn is like a little baseball player. He runs to first base, second base, third base, and then he's home. But he kept running to first base. And the universe said, Saturn, why are you running into Aquarius? Come back. You're not done. He said, I thought I was done with Capricorn. No. You didn't finish your tour of duty, come back. But during that period, he ran into Aquarius. March 20th to July 1st, what were we doing? We were all home. We were in lockdown. And Aquarius likes to separate. But yet, Aquarius likes to help on a humanitarian scale. Next year, the governments are going to be tapped out. 
They're going to say, don't look for me for money. I've been printing money in the basement. I don't have any more money. We're in deficit spending up to here. But people will help people on a grand scale. Mm -hmm. will bring us all together. They're already doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, when the farmers were throwing out their, their carrots and tomatoes and lettuce and, and milk, and they couldn't afford to pick the fruit and, and the vegetables. Pete, the trucking companies, there was one on the news that said, gee, I've got a trucking company. I'll ask my friends if they wouldn't mind driving to poor communities. And I'll go to FEMA and I'll find out where they are. And all their friends said yes. And then they asked for donations and everybody gave more money than he asked for. He could pay the farmers. He got the food. He delivered it because he had seen people online for food banks. He said, no, we can't let this food, you know, go to waste. So you're going to see people seeing need. And also you're seeing right now that all the countries are working together on this vaccine. It used to be that I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing. You know, I'm Pfizer or I'm, you know, another company, AstraZeneca, whatever. Now they're all sharing information because we have a five alarm fire here. And because of Watson, that computer by IBM, every time somebody writes a white paper, everybody gets it at once. That's going to shrink the time. And, uh, and, and we're working with Denmark. We're working with England. We're working with different com countries on the problem. Again, that shortens the time frame. So when are we going to be done with this virus? I feel uh, when Jupiter and Pluto they meet every 13 years. Usually it's a very happy event, but I didn't know Pluto ruled viruses. Oh well, and, and they had dinner and Jupiter expands everything it touches. So Jupiter said, I'm so happy to see you, Pluto. Can I do something? And he said, oh sure, I have this virus. Did you help me spread it? Oh sure, I'll help you. <laughs> Jupiter, are you drunk? What's happening? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the first time they met was April 4th, and you read about New York setting up a hospital in Central Park. Oh, and, and, and the Javits Center, it was all April. They met again June 29th. And I thought, well, they're both retrograde now. Maybe it'll be weaker. I was wrong about that. Remember how the whole Southwest and Florida and Arizona and all those states and it went up to California, everybody got sick. That was the second conjunction. Now they're still retrograde, but they're going to go direct on September 12th is Jupiter, October 4th is Pluto. And they're rested, energetic. They're gonna give us one more wallop on November 12th. I need them to separate eight degrees, but I like 10 degrees better. You know, I know Freddie's like paying attention to this. <laughs> <There'll be> a, <laughs> eight degrees by Christmas, which would be a wonderful Christmas present. Ten degrees by January 12th. And they're not retrograding back. So I think we'll be done with the obsession. Now, I don't know if we'll be done with the virus, but they said, look, at this point, if we could just lower the symptoms, if people don't die from it, anything would be better than what we've got now. And I think we will have something. So we'll see if I'm right. You know, they're not coming back. And Jupiter and Pluto won't meet again for um, 13 years. And, you know, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett were born in a Jupiter-Pluto year. So was uh, Steve Jobs. Even uh, Martha Stewart was. Very successful people are born in these years. And I thought we'd have big money deals. Well, we did. We had trillion dollar tax stimulus i mean stimulus packages i never i didn't even know that was possible you know they're throwing around trillions you know <laughs> they said no well it's unprecedented and we've never done it before it's big whenever you have jupiter pluto so all right all right but we're learning from it we're learning a lot and and we know we have to actually manufacture our own masks and our own, you know, robes and things. We, you know, there's a lot of good things that have come out of this and a lot of awful things. Some of your followers may have lost someone. In New York, we all know at least one person. I also, my best friend's father was on a ventilator and they said he would be a vegetable after this, but he wasn't. 
He's home eating his wife's Italian food, and he's oh, great. Nice. <laughs> Good. Covered, and he's 74, and they can't believe it. But he, he was always active. He's a contractor, he owns a business, and had four children, or five. <laughs> so um, there are some happy stories, but there is a lot of sadness. And the New York Times really beat me up for not predicting the pandemic. But they never called me for a quote. They wrote a whole story about me. <laughs> oh, wow. They you... never called me. And we answer every letter. As you know, I'm very easy to reach. And they said, Susan didn't predict it. But let's make believe I could. Let's, I never looked for a virus. So, I, you know. What would I say? 45 million people are going to be out of work. Probably you. And uh, you might not find a new job for months and you may wonder about how you're going to pay your landlord and find food for your children and you might get sick and you're going to have to stay home all the time am i going to tell people this <laughs> they would think i was a lunatic <laughs> you know um and i i've never lived through a pandemic so i couldn't even look for one mm -hmm. you know I, in astrology to answer some of your question um freddie you have to have the question to find the answer. Oh, gotcha. Got it. That's really interesting. Yeah, and, and I love that that you're seeing, um, you know, light at the end of the tunnel here, that it's going to yeah. give us some relief here in, in December, January, into the next year, because, you know, it's, it's been tough on everybody. And I've been telling people we've been very grateful that we've had a setup where we can work from home. And I know how many people can't, and they're just being you know, devastated right now. So I really hope that we can come together. I'm seeing, there's obviously those tensions, but I can definitely see people coming together because we're all experiencing this. You yeah, know, yeah. This well, it'll be more so next year because you, you just can't watch people suffer. We're hardwired to help. Yeah. You know, we, we all, and uh, yeah, you, yeah, I, my life hasn't changed very much, except I've become Marie Kondo and I'm cleaning out closets every time I have a minute. <laughs> I have a beautiful closet. You know, I've not been home this much. So I'm right. also cooking new recipes, new things, new spices, enjoying it. Really, it's fun. A lot of cooking. Yeah. Chopping. Uh, <laughs> it's very relaxing. You have to find something creative. I've always taught my children that creativity is the key to universe in this world, the key to happiness. Yeah. You know, yes, money is, you need it. You need it. You need a certain level so that you won't get sick. You need money to take care of your family and everything. But above that, you you need creativity too to say, "I made that," because it makes you happy to say that. Oh yeah. yeah. And really quick to go back to the charts. So basically, when it comes to charts, you can tell a lot about an individual just based off of their where they were born, the time they were born, and I'll birth. tell you something about you, Alyssa. You are a good little saver, and you make your own money. Mm -hmm. You're not interested in marrying into money. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> She'll make her own money, yeah. And then the pot will get bigger. And, uh, oh, Freddie is a good little saver, too. Mm -hmm. And you have Jupiter in the house of health the way I do. And by the way, women are really lucky for you. Women carry checks to you. So women bosses, women heads of studios, women. Is this to Freddie? Yeah, Freddie. Hey, yeah. Women are lucky financially for you. Huh. Oh, wow. Freddie's born with a grand trine. No, he's not. Actually, almost a grand trine. Uh, to the south node, but still, it's very, very good chart. And she's got Jupiter in the house of commitment, whether it's marriage or business commitment, you know, like a strong one on one. And you have Venus there. So nice. What does that what's mean? That, what's that? Yeah. Oh, well, you enjoy your partnerships and they're smooth. Venus makes smooth, sweet, easy, like silk. It's just a cutting butter. And, and you're committed because you have Taurus on the cusp of marriage. So your um, marriage for you is for life. And for, um, for Alyssa, she's looking for a self-made man. Yeah. Energetic and 
entrepreneurial and goes out there and slays a dragon. And that's you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and your rising, um, Freddie, is Scorpio. So you should read for Scorpio as well as Pisces every month. Mm. Your rising sign is just as important as your sun sign. And it is the sign that was in the eastern horizon as you were being born. Okay. And, um, and, and Alyssa, you have, you have uh, the lovely uh, Libra mm -hmm. rising. And you both have Pluto in the first house, so you're not going to fall over in a storm ever. Um, you're strong. And you, um, Freddie, you have the moon in Aries. Perfect. That's your entrepreneurial spirit. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, the bud, the first bud on the tree. You know, think of April. And, you know, we've come through a long winter by then. <laughs> and my daughter's born April 19th. And it's like the whole world starts celebrating spring. The cherry blossoms and you get that, the petals in the air. And it's like confetti. It's just so beautiful. You get the jacarandas in June, you know, the just beautiful floral. Oh. So Aries rules the beginning. And when I write, I always start with Aries and end with Pisces because that is the rhythm of life. You start with the birth and, and uh, Pisces is at the end of winter. So you end the wheel there and then it starts over again. It, it just, the wheel keeps moving. And your, um, Alyssa, your moon, oh, your moon's in Libra too. Mm -hmm. That's why you get along so well with everybody. They just love you. And it's in perfect angle to Venus. Why am I surprised? This is like a beautiful chart. Oh my God. Just beautiful. I think you'll be doing, Alyssa, you're going to be doing product development eventually something that people buy it could be tickets to movies i mean um or netflix or whatever um let me see what the north node is well freddie i love your chart because and you're you're still on a soap opera right you still are i'm uh i'm still airing but i actually left the the soap in february okay, okay. uh whoops wait a minute did i lose you wait a minute just the vid. Wait a minute. There it is. Got a yeah. perfect. <laughs> okay. Um, you have Leo at the tippy top where the 12 is on a clock. So you're both in the right field. Okay. Oh, you're laughing probably. Well, I know. <laughs> so Leo at the top. Leo rising. And everything. You know, Freddie, you know the kind of rules I'd like you to try for? Like law and order like a uh, prosecutor, court case, um, detective, finding the clues. Um, I love that. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's fun. Romeo rules all that, and that's your rising sign. And um, you'd be really successful at those roles. You know, Demi Moore is a Scorpio. And tonight, look at all her movies. They're either dealing with law and order or sex in some way, like Indecent Proposal or The Scarlet Letter. Or, uh, and because Scorpio rules sex also. Ah. <laughs> I don't know if your girlfriend's going to like that. So we'll stick to the dramas, you know, the, <laughs> the court cases. Yeah. <laughs> and the detective <laughs> stuff. The FBI, oh, that would be perfect uh -huh. for you. <laughs> and uh, do you have a question? Uh, at all any quite oh you have four planets in capricorn freddie this has not been an easy two years hmm. oh boy you walked uh, you know what i say to capricorns or people who have capricorn planets like you you have four you've walked over hot coals and broken glass but it's over <laughs> that's Yay! good to hear yes. it's leaving you've proven what you had to and you see that this clump of planets here? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. When you have a clump, it's called a stellium or a crown of stars. It, it, it purports to have uh, 
it points to prominence and you know great ability in your field and you know the fact that it's in capricorn you're good with money management but you're also good with things that are historical you know like you could do really well in a dinosaur movie or something hmm. having to do with history or king henry the fifth or something from the past like um merchant ivory movies you know the you know the past you know anything having to do with history would be very lucky for you and actually you may collect something eventually you know like old coins or autographs. I once worked in an auction gallery when my children were little and I, I would touch with white gloves, uh, George Washington letters and Lincoln I would actually touch them. We were going to put them up for auction and I would have to write the press release. I mean, my husband never worked. I was the breadwinner for the whole family and I had the kids in private school. So I, you know, I worked all the time, and but it was fun, you know, and I, I liked being around that. And I think you particularly would, mm. you know, and you may become a collector of something. Oh, by the way, you have to be good to your knees. Good hmm. to my knees, okay. The weakest part of your body is your knees. Also, you have to be good to bones and teeth. Hmm. I go to the dentist every three months for cleaning. Actually, I just went finally. <laughs> My dentist showed up in a hazmat suit <laughs> and a visor and a mask and gloves. And he was just checking me, the hygienist did the, <laughs> the work. But, you know, I, I go a lot and you should. <laughs> I, I did every four months until the whole pandemic. Yeah, um, I know. It's yeah. like, and now... But it's actually better now because you have to come on time, but no more waiting in the waiting room. You know, oh, any right. doctor you go to, you go in and you go out. They really move things along. It's actually better. <laughs> um, let me see about Alyssa, the weakest part of your body. You have to do aerobics. It's your blood supply. Hmm. Uh, it's the same for me. I look at all the transfusions I've had. But, you know, I'm still living. I died on the table once. <gasps> but obviously, they knew what to do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm lucky. Um, it was right before I started my site. And they say, when you have a near-death experience, your life takes a fork in the road, and you go in a new direction. And it did. But I didn't plan it that way. Mm. You know, it just... Time Warner came to me, but you know, it was funny. Um, let me just see. Well, Freddie likes to live in cities. I don't think he likes to live in the country. It has to be where people are. Uh, you like some mountains around you, Alyssa. You like, you like some mountains, some greenery, some. Mm -hmm. And Freddie's okay with a city. Um, Freddie, you have the sun the giver of life and strength in your fifth house of creativity. Okay. Now that I know this, I'm going to be relentless. See, now I know. See, Please, it's too give, it <laughs> <laughs> give it to us. Give it us. I'm going to keep making you write screenplays. You know, you're so creative. You're like a little fountain. Like I just keep coming. <laughs> yes, it's in. It never ends. Never. <laughs> never. Never. And, and it's good. It's a good thing. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes your projects run over budget. That's because you're trying to get them perfect. So always estimate a little bit higher okay. than you think. And then you can come in under budget and then everybody's happy. Exactly. <laughs> like, wow, he came in under budget. But there is a conflict here between money and the creativity. The, the, the projects sometimes are expensive. And, um, so all right, you know, just be really careful when you're budgeting, the, you know, because I want you to have enough cash. Okay. Because cash is the bloodline, right? You know, you run out of cash, you're, you're done, you know, so you have to. Um, no, you, your mother was so happy to have you. She wanted you so much, Freddie. Did she tell you that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely. Yeah, every day. <laughs> unconditional love. Yes. yes. <laughs> It's so funny when Cuomo talks to his brother Chris on CNN. 
He said, you know, I talked to mom. He said, oh, you did? Yeah. She told me she loves me best. <laughs> 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 the two of them talk all the time and they're funny. Um, let's see. Was your father prominent in the field, Alyssa? In, in his field of in work? His, yes, yes, definitely. It shows and you followed in his footsteps. Huh. That's good. Your mother was more shy, but yet strong inside. Do you know what I mean? She didn't want to be in the spotlight, but she was extremely supportive oh. and, um, and fair, very fair. And had a good sense of taste and style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really good. That's her. Oh, you have to, when you get old someday, you have to be good to your hip too. So that may mean eventually you sw switch to the elliptical, which is less hard on your hips than the treadmill is. I have a metal hip. If that <laughs> you already have it. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. found out about yeah. this. I didn't want to scare you. Oh, yeah. I it was in a car. We were in a car accident in 2014, and I had a lot of surgeries. So interesting to know. <laughs> That's a, a weak part. Yeah. Oh, gosh. That must have been really traumatic. It was. It definitely was. Were you in the car, too, Freddie? Were you driving? Or were I was you driving. There? Yeah, we yeah. both were in the car, and it was, um, yeah, 2014. I mean, it's, it's been a horrible year for me. I found wow. out I had ulcers. I didn't know. Oh. And they all broke open like pearls on a necklace in my intestines. Oh, oh, I really gosh. couldn't eat for two years, but they couldn't figure it out. And my doctor finally hired another doctor. And then the new one knew what to do and made me well. But I had to go through a lot for two years. Mm. Yeah, I lost a third of my blood supply. With me, it's always blood. It's always blood. Huh. So, all right. Well, now I have a big eye operation coming up. Oh. I'm always in the hospital. People say to me, what's wrong with you? You know, I, I guess if it were modern day, the doctor would have said to my mother, this baby's got a lot of things wrong. Maybe you shouldn't have it. And I realized that would make me sad, but then my friends who know, knew my mother, she died seven years ago, knowing your mother, she would have had you anyway. So, you know, there, there were genetic things wrong with me. So I just seem to have sweeped up a lot of things that were in the family tree on both sides. But it's okay because I live in a city that has great doctors and they know how to address it. So. Exactly. You know, so I'm lucky. We wish you well on your It also opens your mm. heart. It opens your heart when you've had things wrong, you yeah. know, or, or bad events in your life. It, yeah. it does. It makes you more compassionate. Well, that's, and, that, and we appreciate your, your, uh, your, your wisdom here and your guidance, you know, because that, that, that's our big, we've both been out here in Los Angeles since 2006 and we're about to make this huge life decision and we're moving and oh. getting married and starting a family and, um, it, you know, we're definitely going to be looking for guidance. And I know you can't look at it now, but I'd love if we could email you and hear about. Oh, yeah. Well, I want to I want to meet with you. I want to see know. you. When are you moving, do you think? Did you find the house yet? We're going to rent and we're going to look around because we don't know. We, we don't know the Smart. area well. So we're going to rent for a little while, but we're heading out on September 29th. That is fantastic. Gee, if I can get out to L.A., I will definitely... Florida and Miami both are ruled by Pisces. And in both cases, in your both charts, that's your house of love and children. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, so it's nice. I'm always happy down there. I, I love, I think Florida is the best kept secret. Uh-huh. Now, right now, they're having a lot of trouble with the virus. I know. A lot of older people there that thought they were immune to it mm -hmm. somehow mm -hmm. but uh i think by september i think it should die down don't you i th i think so and uh you know just always be careful they don't want you to go to hot spots although you're in a hot spot i now. know i know <laughs> going from one to the next. but that's why we wanted to quarantine in a house there with a pool because in la it's very hard to do that there's so many people here um yeah. 
Yeah. But also, too, one last question for you, because you kind of say the charts are a guide. And right now, I'd say Freddie and I have our hands in a lot of different projects. You know, we do our, our podcast. There's obviously acting, fashion, writing, blogging. And I'm just curious if there's any sort of guidance of what you might see on your end from something we really should. Well, when I first looked at your chart, I was going to ask you, Alyssa, if you ever wanted a little restaurant. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you could but your chart is very strong with entertainment okay extremely extremely strong and also not so much reality but fantasy writing you know like novels sure yeah i could say not real life you know an imagined life right and with freddie Freddie's got this historical thing going on, a lot of acting on that detective stuff. Huh. It's screaming in his chart. Um, jobs come to you forever. I mean, when nobody's working, you're working, Freddie. I have Jupiter in that house too. You're like a little job magnet. It keeps. <laughs> that's good, that's great. <laughs> He's a good and, and they're day-to-day -day jobs that you have a beginning, middle, and end, but at least they keep coming. Mm -hmm. And remember, women are lucky for you. Awesome. So if there's a, a studio head or, you know, maybe Quibi would be interested in stuff you're doing. You, you've heard about them. Yeah. They're in L.A. Um, you know, such a big focus is on the family and moving. It's, it's almost as if your career is taking a, a back seat, but we do have Mars. Oh yeah, Mars is in your work. You're gonna be working while you're moving, which is not easy. You better start packing now. <laughs> and, oh, Alyssa, you're gonna be working too. You're both gonna have all these jobs come up and they're good jobs. They're they're their jewels they lead you somewhere hmm. so you're gonna have to do them well just you know when I moved and it was years ago and I had two little children and you know children think something's wrong and they they come to you so I packed with Diana on my hip bone <laughs> they're like little little koala bears you know yeah. they're so cute though and so soft you know so I would pack two boxes a night and then you have to label them on all four sides and the top and the bottom. And, and you just get lots of bubble and just, see, I know a lot of people hire people to do it, but then you don't know where anything is. I just think it's better for you to do it. Okay. And never give a moving company your tax records. You put that in the car and you move that. Or, or somehow you have to be so careful with those, you okay. know because my friend had those stolen. That jewelry and grandmother's china, or your wedding china. <laughs> hey, you know, I think you should register. So many couples don't register good china. If you don't do it now, you're never gonna do oh, it. Wow. It's so nice to have. <laughs> I have it, so I'll invite you over. Yeah. <laughs> when we're in New York. <laughs> I'm a good cook, I am, I'm a good cook. <laughs> Very good cook. I'm half Italian, half German, but my daughter gave me Blue Apron for Chris uh, for Mother's Day. Oh, so nice! And I am enjoying it beyond belief. I am trying new things, new recipes, things I don't think I would like. I'm loving. So it opens you up. You know, you don't realize you're in a rut until you come out of it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, we have to thank you so much for your time. And also, where I got to meet you. <laughs> I know. Where can everyone find you and this amazing calendar? By and they're on sale right now, half price. Open it up and you'll see I wrote every word in there. And people can pick their best day to interview for a job or have a first date. or. Um, I hired Isaac, who now has uh, been hired to do all of Estee Lauder's holiday beauty, which is just wonderful. So I'm at astrologyzone.com, and my uh, on Apple and on Google Play, I'm Daily Horoscope Astrology Zone by Susan Miller, 
and it's free, or you can buy the one that's four ninety nine a month. Apple and Google take thirty percent, so I have to charge four ninety nine a month, and for all the editing and everything. But people like it because they're long dailies, and all my essays and everything is right in your pocket whenever you need it. So, so, um, and I'm working on a cookbook. Ooh, nice. how exciting. With the sous chef of Le Bernardin. Ah. Dang. So these are, ordinary, these are easy to do recipes, but wonderful. And some are plant-based. And, you know, we know we have all kinds of dietary, you know, restrictions for people. So we're going to cover the waterfront. And, and I'm going to have it by sign. So if you're having Capricorns for dinner, you know what to cook, you know. Oh, wow. That's cool. I love it. It's for entertaining. It'll be fun. So fun. So clever. Once, once everything gets cleared up and a little safer and our paths cross, we would love to have some dinner with you and meet you in person and give you a big... Definitely. I definitely want to meet with you. For sure. We're going to make it. We're going to make it happen. Yes, we will, girl. Oh, perfect. And if you want those 25 calendars... Just write to Courtney and uh, give her the address that they should go to. Okay. And, uh, and we'll even tell you uh, Amazon sells the envelopes. And they're only a dollar a piece. They're not expensive. And, and they'll protect them when you send it to the, your winners. <laughs> awesome. <Love it. laughs> well, thank you, Susan. We appreciate okay. you so much. And uh, good luck on your surgeries. Yes. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you. I hope I'll be able to see you better after. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, All right. You thank care. you, Susan. Well, you too. You soon. Have bye a great bye. day. Bye-bye.